Log into Jenkins using Bitbucket. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.414.3. Now, in order to integrate with Bitbucket for authentication, we must first install a new plugin. The plugin that we need to install is Bitbucket OAuth. Now, let's go over to our controller. I've already pre-installed this plugin, but let's go ahead and verify that it's there. So we'll go to Manage Jenkins, Plugins. We'll go to Installed Plugins, and let's search for Bitbucket, and we'll find Bitbucket OAuth plugin has already been installed. Now let's take a look at the documentation for this plugin. There's two parts that we need to do. We first need to create a key and secret inside of Bitbucket, and then once we've created that, we need to go ahead and go inside of our controller and configure it to use that client ID and secret. So let's go ahead and do the first part. We'll go ahead and log into the Bitbucket account, which I'm already here. We'll go ahead and click on the gear. And in my case, I'm going to use Bitbucket Administration Workspace Settings. Now, based on what version of Bitbucket you're using, you may just be clicking on your avatar and then click on Bitbucket Settings. If you're part of an organization, make sure you're on team settings and not account settings. So depending on which way you're using Bitbucket, this flow may change just a little bit. But what we're trying to get down to is this next section called OAuth or OAuth Consumer in our case. If we go down on the right-hand side under Apps and Features, we see OAuth Consumers. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now what we need to do, according to the documentation, is we need to click on Add Consumer. In our case right now, we still see Add Consumer. We'll click on Add Consumer, and then we're gonna be filling out some information. Let's take a look at our documentation again. We need to give it a name and a callback URL. Everything else is optional. Now for the name, I'm just gonna give it the name of my controller. In my case, that's J11. For the callback URL, I need to take the base URL for my controller, which in this case ends in J11, but then we also need to go ahead and end it with security realm slash finish login. So let's copy that and paste it in here at the end of the base URL. So what I have is my base URL slash security realm slash finish login. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Now under permissions, we need to go ahead and select a couple of permissions. We need account read and optionally team membership read. So let's go over into Bitbucket. We'll say account and read. Now, according to the documentation, the last step we need to do, so let's go ahead and click on save. And at this point, it's created a client ID and a secret under this J11. Once you expand it, you'll see those values. Go ahead and expand it. Go ahead and copy the value for your ID and for your secret, because we're gonna need those again in just a few moments. Now that you've copied your ID and the secret, let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. We'll click on Manage Jenkins. We'll scroll down to Security. And what we're going to do is we're going to change our security realm from Jenkins own user database to the Bitbucket OAuth plugin. What we'll see here is we have two fields to fill out. We have the client ID and the client secret. Take the values that you just copied out of Bitbucket and let's paste them in here. Now that we've pasted those values in, let's go ahead and click on Save. Now, currently I'm logged in as the admin user. You can see that in the upper right-hand corner. Now, just because we've clicked on Save in the security section, what that did is that set up the integration with Bitbucket, but because we're still logged in, we need to first log out before we can actually log in using the Bitbucket credentials. So let's go ahead and click on Log Out. Now it's asking us, confirm access to your account. J11, remember that's the name of the OAuth consumer that we created. It wants to read my account information. Remember, that's the permission that we gave. Let's go ahead and grant access. And then once we gave it access, we were redirected back over to our controller. Now, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see my lowercase name there. If I go ahead and click into configure, what we'll see is that's my full name. And if I scroll down into my email address, you can see that my email address was pulled in and populated from Bitbucket. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.